Okay, let me put in the chat also, I created a GitHub, okay? Because uh, there was there was a lot of material. So I had to, I had to organize it somehow. So this is the GitHub of all the material that I, uh, uh, that I research, okay? So it's right there in the GitHub. And also the presentation is there too, okay? So let's start. Um, I added a couple of things, okay, to the presentation. So, you know, we have a, a, a better grasp of, of, the, of what we're talking about. And one of the things that I added, okay, I found apart from, from, from the objectives, the linear objectives, you know, that we discussed uh, la last, the last session, the previous session, I found that there's some assumptions in what is called the Cox uh, proportional hazards uh, model, which is a, a, a semi-parametric regression. Uh, I found some interesting uh, topics on the, the model assumptions, which are analog to what we uh, saw in chapter three in linear regression and a multi, multiple, uh, um, a multiple regression. Uh, some of the assumptions that you should be aware. So I added that to the, to the presentation. So let's have a quick review of what we talked from the, from the previous session. So then we can start you know, uh, the new discussion. Uh, I inserted a meme here that I found that is very interesting. It basically sums up what is sensor data, okay? And here the meme says, you either die a hero or you live long enough to become right sensor. <laughs> okay. Nice. So, you know, <laughs> nice, right? So let's say that, you know, you start reading the novel, right? And there are, you know, many characters there, villains, heroes, and all that. So the hero, you know, if it if it, if it doesn't make it, then it becomes, you know, it, it becomes a statistic, right? It becomes the, the, the event. If not, then you know it escapes and it becomes sensor data. So sometimes sensor data is it's nice, you know, to. To, to achieve, okay. Depending on what what are you what are you studying, uh, so remember that those those sensor data is the ones that they didn't uh, arrive to the event that we're studying, okay. They didn't arrive at the end of the the time frame or the time frame that we you know uh, uh, are 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 uh, researching, okay. Uh, so we talk a little bit about uh, synonyms for survival analysis, uh, reliability analysis, time to event, which is the correct uh, term. Okay, survival analysis come because of the health, you know, uh, background. Okay, uh, there's some nice uh, from Seth statistics. There's some nice uh, videos. He hasn't complete the whole. You know, there there are supposed to be eight uh, videos. I think he's in the fourth. So, but if you subscribe, you know, in the YouTube, you'll get a reminder of when you know he's researching. And as a matter of fact, the one that I wanted to make sure that I saw is not there, which is the fifth one, which is about hazard uh, functions. Okay, so we talk a little bit about type of censoring. Remember that there's right censoring, left censoring, uh, interval censoring. We're just, for now, we're just centering in right censoring. The ones when we know the status of everyone that we're studying, every person, every audio we're studying. And then at the end, time you know the, the time frame then we'll have people that reached the event before and some individuals that didn't reach the event okay and those are the some of the reasons the causes why you could you could have that uh that phenomenon okay and we talk a little bit about our data set which is the brain cancer uh data set uh that is uh in the in the in the textbook okay it's a study about uh, people that have already, they have the tumor, right? The brain tumor. And we work, the study is centers on the, the, the stereo, the stereo uh, um, uh, application to try to ameliorate, ameliorate that, that, that tumor. And some of them will reach, you know, we reach the event, which is the event is, you know, death in this case. And some some other will not reach. It, okay, those are the sensor, the sensor data in this case. Okay, 
And we discussed a little bit about the, the composition of the data set, okay? Uh, they uh, have uh, uh, the gender, they have the diagnosis, which is, is, is a factor of four, four diagnosis. They have the location of the tumor in the, in the brain. They have what is called the stereo, which is the method that they are, you know, doing like kind of, kind of a chemotherapy that they're doing to try to, you know, contain the growth of the tumor or try to reduce it, et cetera. They only have two methodologies. And then there are some other, uh, you know, predictors there like Chi, Karnowski index and the GVT, the growth volume of the, of the tumor. Okay. And we have the counts, okay? The ones that uh, reflect status uh, zero, which are the, the uncensored data, there are 53, it's, it's a total of 88 observations. And the ones that reach the event, which is one, is 35, okay? We talk about the kaplan mayer uh, survival curve, which is one of the first things that you're introduced to the uh, survival analysis. And this curves, what it tells you is, uh, at a given time, right? At a given time in the x, x axis, which is the probability of that, you know, particular time, that probability, how many people, okay? How many individuals were surviving uh, that event? They didn't reach uh, that event, okay? So that's how, so that's how it begins. And that's the, you know, the function that we use uh, to calculate that, very simple. Uh, then we introduce in the survival fit uh, model, we introduce a, what is called a covariate in this case, or a predict or, 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 a, or a predictor that is uh, gender. And then we divided that curve, we divided between a female and male. And we observe from the, from the plot, we observe that the survival probability of the female is a little bit higher than the male, but we want to know if that is statistically significant. And that's why we went to that, you know, uh, methodology within that plot to calculate what is called the p-value. And the p-value, which is, you know, the standard is that if you have less than 0 0.05, you can reject the, you know, the, the null hypothesis and accept the alt alternate, which is that there's a significant difference. In this case, the p-value is 0.23, so you don't have enough evidence, right, to uh, make that assertion. So you can say that there's no statistically uh, significance to those rates between the genders. Okay. Okay. So this is this is the new stuff that I wanted to discuss, you know, with with you, and and this is a, a preamble in the in the book. Okay, let me check the book here. Uh, okay, in the book, in the chapter where it starts to uh, talk about the regression models, okay, with a survival response, which will be eventually the Cox uh, pH model, they start mentioning what is called the hazard function. Okay, and the hazard function is this formula that we have here, and this formula. If you remember your calculus, <laughs> uh, your calculus, uh, uh, you know, uh, class or lesson, uh, they introduce us before doing, you know, all, all those nice things about derivatives and integrals and all that. They introduce a concept of a limit, okay? And you know, I had to go back, okay, because I took calculus, you know, many moons ago, so I had to go back to see why this formula is this way. So one of the, um, one of the resources that I found is this one. It's, it's from a blog. Uh, his name is Chen. It's from a blog and he's doing, you know, more or less what, what we're doing, you know, studying the basics of survival analysis. But he has this, this analogy that I'm going to present you. Uh, it, it really click in terms of how to understand what is the, really what is the hazard function, okay? And I'm just going to read that paragraph uh, to let you, you know, in, on that analogy, that he, he does an analogy of a, of a car speeding, okay, through a road, and then 
at a certain point of time try to determine what is the speed that the car is you know is, is going to okay so uh, i'm going to read it and then you know we can you know if you have any doubts you know let, let's discuss so he's discussing the survival right we discussed the survival which is the probability of at a given time of those observations not reaching uh, uh not reaching the event okay the survival uh, probability here what we are going to you know uh uh work around is when when what is the risk okay or when at the time when is that event happening okay which is kind of a reverse you know is the other side of the coin so let me read it the other quantitative function of interest in survival analysis is the hazard function okay and is is uh mathematically uh is known as h parenthesis t I always found the hazard function a bit difficult to interpret. The easiest way to think about it is to consider the scenario of where you are reading off a speedometer of a specific moment t. You're in your car, you're driving, and you can see you know, the kilometers per hour or miles per hour, you know, in our case, of the speed that you're going at a given, at a given moment. So at this specific time moment, the speed you are traveling, let's say is 40 kilometers per hour. What this means is if you travel at the specific rate for the next hour, you will travel 40 kilometers, right? Okay, because you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a rate, right? It's a, it's a, a speed is, is a rate. Distance, right? Uh, you know, uh, uh, distance by, uh, by time. But of course, there will be fluctuations and you will go faster or slower than 40 kilometers per hour. So it doesn't really give you the specific distance you will travel, okay? So for example, let's say that I started, you know, from my home, I started to go to my job. And in that instance, I, you know, I, uh, I, I reach 40 kilometers per hour in a, any instance between my, my home and my job. But the thing is that even though I reach that this that that speed, there con there's going to be fluctuations between it, right? For example, when I start accelerating from my home, I'm going to you know transverse a, a some distance that is not going to be equal to that average, okay, of 40 miles kilometers per hour. So that's why he's saying that we don't know exactly what is the distance, really, because there could be fluctuations. Now, so in, in other words, what does, what's the, what does that 40 kilometers per hour mean? All it tells you, and this is why it's in bold, all it tells you is that at any given moment in your travel, okay, in your travels, that was the speed that you were, that, 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 that you attained, okay? It doesn't tell you how many, uh, you know, how many miles, how many kilometers you travel, because that's going to be dependent on each of those instances, okay, and each of those of those of, the, of those uh, speeds. So all it tells you is that at any given moment you are traveling this fast. Importantly, implicit this is the fact that you have already traveled some amount of distance. Okay, maybe it's not forty kilometers, maybe it's less, maybe it's more, but you have traveled some distance. So in a nutshell, that is the hazard function. Okay, you know, put it in, in, in analogy, right? Put it in the, in, in the survival uh, scheme that we are saying, uh, we're saying is that at any given moment of that function, there's going to be a risk, okay? Because it's not a probability as the, as the equation you can see, there's a probability at the, at, at, at the you know, at the uh, numerator, but the denominator is that change in time. Okay, that delta in time. So it's not real probability. It's more like a rate, like the speed that we were talking talking about. Okay. So, what do we call this? Well, there are many names uh, for it, but usually in health, it's called what is called the force of mortality. Okay, which is at any, at any given instance in time, you can, uh, you know, find the risk. Okay. 
as a percentage, right? The risk of attaining that event, okay? Not surviving, surviving, we have it in the kaplan meier curve, is attaining that event, okay? In terms of, you know, time to event, uh, 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 which is the, the broader uh, name for survival analysis, basically it's called a conditional failure rate, okay? In other words, there's going to be some kind of time, okay, on time where the, depending on certain circumstances, you're going to reach that event or there's a risk of, re uh, of reaching that event. The more time it passes, that's a presumption, the more time it passes, the larger risk of attaining that event. Okay, any questions so far? Good, you're with me? Good, yep. Okay, good, okay. So let's go back to the presentation. So now that we have the hazard function, what are we going to do with it, okay? And the book uh, tells us, what do we care about this hazard function? Well, the first thing that the book says is that it's you know, closely related to the survival uh, you know, uh, probability that we're studying. But the second one, and is one of the most important, that's why we're studying this, is because this is a key approach for modeling survival data, okay? As a function of what is called covariates, which in chapter three, those are our regressors, okay? And relies heavily in this function. The only thing is that you don't see it as this. You see it as the cumulative hazard function. Okay, and this is the one that we really use, the cumulative. From the hazard function, we get a cumulative. In other words, we're going to you know, accumulate all those instances, which is easier to in interpret. So in our way, I'm not going to you know, delve too much on, on, the, on the math, but in our uh, data set, okay, in our data set, um, we can uh, plot the cumulative hazard uh, rate for each of the genders that were studied. And this is the plot. Let me see because my screen is doing funny things. Okay. And this is the plot. So let's say, remember when we were talking about the Kaplan Mayer uh, curve? Uh, that we said, okay, at any given time, let's say 20, at any given time, we have a probability of X percent, right? Which is, you know, how a probability uh, works between zero to one of uh, surviving that event. Here, what it tells you is the risk, it's not probability, the risk of achieving that event at a certain time, okay? So in 20, you will see that the females, right, which is the red, the red uh, uh, curve, the females have uh, less risk of achieving that event than the males. Okay, something that we study also on the other side, but as a survival, you know, uh, feature. Okay, and the interesting thing is that then we can talk now about what is called proportional hazards, okay? Which is the base for that COGS uh, proportional hazards um, model. And this is the, the equation. I found another uh, source, okay? That give us the equation, but now in a format that we can, you know, uh, usually uh, uh, visualize that this is really a regression, okay? you have HT, which is the hazard function, right? And then you have exponentially uh, an addition of the covariates with their, you know, with the coefficients, right? With the beta. A question for the, you know, for, for our audience, okay? Uh, in this case, uh, Federica and Jim. What does that formula, you know, reminds you? What do you mean? The the yeah, the, this formula, yeah, the proportional that, hazards regression model. model. What does that bit. formula reminds you? Aha, uh -huh. the logit from logistic regression. 
Yeah. Excellent, bingo, bingo. Logistic regression, okay? Mm -hmm. And remember that we talk in the logistic regression, we talk about that the, the outcome, right? Is really a log of an odds ratio, right? Okay, we talk about that. And then when you take the log out with the exponential function, then you get the odds ratio, which gives you a parameter of comparison, okay? Between, uh, you know, the, out, the, the, the outcome, because it's binary, right? Usually binary or multi-class, but let's take binary, between one state or the other, okay? You know, which, which is likely more, uh, you know, more probable to, to occur, okay? The same th thing applies here. Okay, think about logistic regression, but in a survival time to event analysis. Okay, so some of the things that are important to consider in this, uh, you know, uh, Cox, uh, he's the author of this, you know, he's the one that created this model because and this is the most popular uh, re regression at, at, that, at that point. It is important to emphasize that the relative risk doesn't depend on time, that is, time is constant for the same pair of values of any feature. So the hazards are proportionally independent of the time. Okay, that's one of the assumptions. And the other is that this is a semi-parametric model. What we mean by semi-parametric is that we rely more on the data, okay, to get you know, our, our statistics. In a parametric model, we rely on those, you know, random numbers, those hazard you know, uh, rates, which could be model, we rely on a certain distribution and there are models for that, okay? Uh, for example, I, I stumble on, 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 on the Weibo um, uh, distribution, which is you know, usually used for a modeling time, time, time to event and other model exponential and all that, okay? But this one doesn't rely on that. You know, it, it's, it, it doesn't care about the distribution. It care about the, the assumption that the proportional hazards are going to be independent of the time, okay, of the event, okay? So I think now we can understand better the regression model that I introduced, you know, last time without that, uh, you know, that, that background. And in our case that we're studying, right, the, the brain cancer, uh, we're going to use this model to try to make a regression model on the outcomes, right, or the outcomes of the of, of the of the survival analysis by certain covariate or certain regressors. In this case, we're going to fit the survival model, which is, which is the serve time status status, with uh, sex. Okay, as we're doing before with, with the plots. And in this case, when you get the fit and get the summary, and it's similar to the summary that we get with a logistic regression, we see that the that the that that covariate really has two factors, right? It's the gender, it has female and male. But in the summary, we don't see female. Why? Because female is the baseline, it's the zero, right? It's the baseline. So what it's telling us is that the sex male, because it's positive, the, the coefficient has a higher uh, probability of achieving that event than the base, than the, than, than the, than the female. Yeah, and exactly. It's one time, uh, 0.5, uh, 1.5 times uh, higher right, right. the risk for, of getting brain cancer for male than female uh, under this condition. Exactly, because in that 1.5, what you're doing is traducing, right? For, you know, extracting that coefficient to the real value, okay? We are exponentiating that coefficient, like in logistic regression. And then, uh, as Federica said, you have 1.5 uh, more likelihood, okay, of the male of, Getting getting worse uh, in this case, getting getting worse by by the by by the sex, getting worse than or achieving that event than the female. Okay, I think now it's clear because we know the hazard, we know the hazard function and the pro proportional hazards. 
And in this case, okay, uh, my screen is doing uh, all kinds of stuff. Okay, that's good. <laughs> I think the laptop is, you know, is dying. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So in this one, we're going to use all the other regressors, all, all the covariates that, that we have uh, available. And we get another summary with all the regressors. Remember that that's a baseline, okay, uh, for it. And then we get uh, some uh, p-values, right? You know, significant, say, say, statistically significant, you know, uh, indicators. And as you can see, there are only two right here that are, you know, statistically significant according to the to the to the p values which are the diagnos diagnosis of the hg glioma and the karnofsky Kar karnofsky index okay and you get the you know your uh, uh, confidence intervals etc so if we want to visualize this in a plot okay this will be okay uh, this will be the plot to visualize the predicted uh, out outcome of those, all those, you know, uh, all those regressors uh, by, by time. Okay. Can, can, can you see it? Because, you know, my screen is making uh, it It's flashing like doing things, but uh, yeah. then, yeah, it's just stop. Okay, good. Okay. So that's basically the. You know, in, in logistic regression, you know that you have this uh, sinoid, right? Sinoid curve. Well, this is the curve, you know, for that for for that model. And then you can have uh, coefficient estimates, right? Okay, because you have the confidence intervals, and you can have a picture of more or less, you know, which are the coefficients that have a probability of of, of going to zero. That's why they're not significant. And um, some of the some of the ones that are highly significant that they don't have a high probability of uh, turning zero, okay, like the glioma and also the the Karnofsky index, okay. How are we doing so far? Good. Okay. And then you can use this model then to predict. Okay, predict on scene data like we have we have done you know with uh, with, with any type of regression. You can if the model is sound, right? If model is sound, then you can use use to predict a new uh, new on scene on scene data. Okay, so let me see. Um, okay. So I told you that um, I found some uh, interesting theory about the assumptions of, of this model, because it's a regression. So you know that regressions usually have uh, assumptions. For example, residuals that they should be, you know, normally distributed, uh, the impact of outliers, and also the relationship, okay, between the, the, the the regressors and the outcome uh, are are they are they behaving linear or not? So let's take a peek of our models. This is the same model that had all the all the covariates. Okay. So let's go here and let's see what we have. So in in what is called the proportional hazard assumptions, uh, there's you know uh, different names for the same thing. In, in in normal linear regressions, uh, you have you know a plot of the fitter res residuals, and then you check if there is a you know if, if if the variance is going larger or not. In this case, the diagnostics I'll call what is called the scale Schoenfeld residuals, which is analog to what you know the fitter residuals plot is doing. So that's the this is the plot. Okay, let me see if the computer behaves properly. Okay. Okay. So this is the plot. This is the the, the function GG Cox uh, ZPH test pH. And then as you can see, you have the axis, the x-axis, which is time, right? And then you have a plot for 
the different the different uh, covariates, okay? The different you know the the, the, the different uh, regressors uh, that we have. And what is what is this is telling you in a nutshell? You know the story of the, of these graphs is that if those points behave, you know, randomly, in other words, you know, they are uh, uh, ex, a, a equal number above, you know, the zero line, equal number above the the uh, or below the, the zero line, and also they don't go too far, you know, from the dotted lines, which are the the confidence intervals. Then you can say that the test of you know of uh, uh, of the residual test, which is really the the is testing randomness, uh, is 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 valid. And as you can see, there's some you know p values that are telling you the same the same story that visually you can you know you can you can observe. Okay. The null hypothesis is that you know the residuals behave randomly. The alternate is that they don't behave randomly. Okay, then let's go to the, the influential, the, the, the extreme values, the outliers. And we know that extreme values in your traditional regression, they tend to you know, affect a lot, especially the slope, right? The slope of that, of that, of that line, because they try, you know, they push it to that outlier. So in this case, we're going to do uh, the function is the GG Cox diagnostics. Okay, this is all from the Surveyor Surveyor uh, package. Okay, so let's see here. So we have again we have plots for each of the of the regressors, the covariates, and what we're looking is if there is a point uh, observations that goes really way out. Okay, of the main swarm of 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 uh, of dots right and as you can see uh the scale here is very is 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 is, is very discrete okay uh the most that you have is 0.2 and usually we have a standard deviation of plus or minus uh, one so in you know in in summary these plots what is telling you right now is that there is really no extreme uh, values in this in this data set because they don't really go you know really uh, there's no point that go really out like uh, two standard or three standard uh, deviations okay so the the, the that data set is a well behaved uh, data set sometimes uh, you know uh, you don't find it in your in the real world so you you know you know how it is okay so. Uh, and there's some interesting, uh, you know, uh, things that you can notice. For example, uh, positive values here for those dots uh, correspond to individuals that die too soon compared to expected survival times. Okay, so they reached the bend before uh, it was expected. Negative values correspond then to the opposite, right? That they live too long and they were supposed, you know, to achieve the event uh, sooner. And very large or small values are outliers, which are poorly predicted by the model. Okay, so we have this, which is the the main, you know, the the, the main graph, and we can see that even though there's kind of a, you know, the low S, right? It's kind of a curve uh, there. Uh, we can see that the points between the zeros are basically uh, symmetric. Okay, so. Uh, at least you know we 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 cannot attest for sure that there's a observation that is skewing that uh you know that that slope or that log log hazard. Okay, and then the third one is the test for linearity. In other words, do my covariates behave in a linear fashion or a nonlinear fashion? And uh, the function here is G. G. Cox functional. Okay, from the same package. And you can see that for the covariate as uh, gender, right sex, the covariate gender, you can see that you know visually uh, there's a line. Okay, so they're behaving uh, pretty linearly. Let's check uh, GTV, right? The gross tumor of volume, and as you can see, that one is not that linear, even with the transformations. Okay, we're doing the log transformation, also the square transformation. So that one is kind of wild, okay. okay. Fortunately, 
if you follow the you know the the summary of the of the of the fit and model uh this particular parameter was not highly significant so what you can do is you know keep working on it or you know uh discard it okay to try to get a, a better a better uh, uh model that you know fits into the assumptions okay um basically that's it for surviving analysis <laughs> okay <laughs> thank you okay do, do we have time Let's okay see, yeah, yeah we, we have some time because i yeah. i have a bonus if, if there's not any more questions here okay. all right hey yeah. jim, jim <laughs> likes the jim's like the thing and of course the I'm, I'm i'm all in i love this chapter yeah <laughs> yeah no this chapter is is great i wish you know what one of the things that i would recommend to the you know to the authors is to you know try to dig in on, on the explanations okay because sometimes you know they just show you the the the, the formula the mathematical formula and say well what the heck is this okay and you have to really go through other brief references to then you know try to understand it like i like i like i did okay so let's let's do something something interesting okay so uh i remember that jim uh you know gave us some some inkling uh, last time about uh, Bayesian, uh, Bayesian statistics, okay, which is, you know, uh, the next step in in, in statistical uh, inference, right? And I began to research, and I found, uh, you know, uh, kind of a kind of a book. It's a book about uh, modern statistics. It's in the link, okay. And there's a chapter that. Uh, talks about how to apply Bayesian uh, methods to survival analysis, something that usually you don't find. Okay, you find Bayesian in other, you know, in machine learning, in, in other models, but in survival analysis, you have to really, you know, dig a little bit. Okay, because it's not that, you know, I don't know if it's if it's that well developed like other or algorithms or etc. But you know, there's something there. <laughs> So uh, following this, okay, uh, the the libraries that are, are we're using here, uh, the library is uh, the R Starn Arm, okay, which is a library that you know uh, interfaces with the Stan, which is the you know the Bayesian, the, ba the Bayesian models, and also the base plot uh, library. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our data set, brain cancer, right, and then we're going to uh, uh, do a, a modeling, okay? And in that R star arm, there's a function called star underscore serve, okay? Okay, caveat, caveat here. If you uh, install that package from CRAN, okay? If you install that package from CRAN, uh, that function is not going to be available because that function is still in development, okay? So you have to go, to the GitHub, okay, and install a, a particular, you know, branch. It's called feature survival from a particular branch, and then you can find the the function. I had to do that. <laughs> I had to do all that all that research, okay. But once you have it, once you have it, then you can use that to model uh, survival uh, models with uh, Bayesians, okay. So I already run run it. Uh, because depending on your machine, you know, it could take some time. Uh, in the summary, doing the same process that we did with the gender, right? You know, fitting fitting the model with the gender. Uh, this is what we get. Okay. Let me let me check this here. Okay. This is a summary of the of the Bayesian model. As you can see, there is really no uh, priors. Okay. We're just taking the model as it is, and then you know. For analyzing the, the posteriors. So this is the summary. And I'm not going to delve too much in it. Okay. Uh, the, the script is in the GitHub. So you can also run it. Remember that you have to install from the GitHub. Okay. From the GitHub, not from CRAN. You're not going to find it, that this function. function. Then uh, I did another fitting 
of the survivor model, but adding also the stereo. And I was very interested on that one because the stereo is the, uh, the, the chemotherapy methodology that they're using to try to see if it is uh, effective to control the tumor or not. Okay, to you know, prolong the longevity of the of the of the patients. Okay, so this is the summary here. Okay, is the summary, and because usually we don't, you know, it's it's harder, you know, to get some information from tables, for example. Well, uh, the the base plus gives us a help in terms of traducing the, that information into a plot. So if you can see to my right, okay, to the right of the of the R studio, um, these are the confidence, the coefficients estimates, okay, for the gender, okay, sex male, and for the methodology SRT of the of the stereo, okay, stereo SRT, and as you can see, uh, there's a line. I don't know if you can you know, see it, but there's a line, a dotted line that is the zero, okay? So what it's telling you here is that in the estimate, in the patient estimate of the confidence of interval for sex males, there is a chance that that coefficient could turn to zero, okay? Because it goes to the negative side. In the SRT, it doesn't, okay? So that tells me that at least, you know, from the frequentist uh, approach, that corroborates a little bit, you know, those p-values, right? That we have a better chance of getting zero on the sex male, on the sex male than on the SRT. But let's not stop there, okay? Let's uh, add some distribution, okay? From the random samples that we uh, uh, did to create, you know, th this model. So if we go here, okay? Then now, instead of the estimates, now you have the whole distribution of the samples for each of the coefficients of the covariance. And now you get more information, right? You still get that zero dotted line, and you can see that the zero in the sex male, the zero overlaps, right? The, the, these areas of confidence intervals overlaps the zero, okay? So that tells you that there's a, there's a chance, a good chance that that could be could be zero, in other words, could be not significant. But then in the SRT, the stereo SRT, you see that even though it touches in the tail, in the tail is the one that is not shadow, okay? So the confidence intervals are the areas that are shadow. And in the confidence intervals, it won't, it, it, it won't touch zero, okay? So this is another approach that you could use, right? to get more inference into your uh, uh, coefficients uh, for, the, for those covariates, okay? Which, which is more than just a p-value, right? <laughs> also, you can theorize on the risk here, okay? What is the risk of a, a person that is male, uh, you know, uh, achieving the event? So you can calculate because there's a distribution that calculate that in that area. Okay, the same thing for SRT. So you can go a little bit deeper on your statistical inference, not just you know, uh, no hypothesis or alternate. You can do you know a, a, a couple of interesting things here. Okay, so this is it. <laughs> this is all I have. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. No, this is good. This is really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Uh, yeah, play, play, play with it. I'm, I'm looking forward to join the, uh, the Bayesian, the Bayesian group, you know, wh wh whatever they, they, you know, they are, <laughs> or maybe a new core, you know. <laughs>